Okay, so for this last learn together for week four, it probably isn't a surprise what we're gonna do based on what you went over in this section, okay? So rendering filtered data. Now I actually didn't do filtered data, I just rendered the data back based on what the user gave me in processing it, but you definitely could do filtered here. Um, I'm not gonna make it a requirement. And then uh, working with forms, of course, is the, not of course, it's the probably the most important thing you walk away with here. And then understanding how to do two additional inputs besides just the regular input, um, you know, is really good. And I'm gonna end up using just a regular input, text input, and I'm gonna use a checkbox. I definitely recommend checking out, and because here's the thing, at this point, what you're gonna do is you're going to look at your, um, code and now you're going to create a form that will instead of you setting up the user data you're going to actually gather the user data okay and that's a really important distinction so what you want to have for this output and i'll just show you mine right um is for me i want to do and actually i'm going to shorten the length of this because this current time now this current time for me actually would also be really well done as a drop down because there would only be probably five or six things to choose from but for this right i'm going to go ahead and hit seven uh, and i can say are you drive uh, are you driving and then determine the task I ended up playing with the current date object, which I'm happy to say in the future, we're going to end up using moments for this. But, and the other thing noticed that happened and it went by really quickly, but you can see it over here in my dev um, developer tools is after I hit submit, process the event listener code, I cleared, and this is how I did it in these last two lines is I cleared the values, the input values, because if I didn't, they would just hang out there. So in, it's fairly easy, right? Especially if you're naming them as he shows, naming them in your HTML. So the other thing I did, and I'll show you this, and this he didn't cover, but I want you to do at minimum this, okay? And because here's the deal, he doesn't talk about yet form validation, but anytime we start accepting user input, we have to think about validating that input. And we're going to start with the bare minimum requirement. And I'll show you how it works is if you hit um, the submit. And again, this has to be a form. It can't just be an event listener on a field. You'll need to do a form here to have this bare minimum work. Is that by doing, and this is why it's so simple. That's why it's bare minimal. And actually, let me just move over and show you. you what you do is you add just an attribute into your input. So here was the input for that, uh, for mine. Uh, let me just scoot this over a little bit. And by the way, I like to have, especially if I'm doing this type of work uh, with I'm modifying or reaching over to the index file is I have both up. But in this case, if you just add required as an attribute on an input value, then you get this functionality of, and you can customize this message through, and you can, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to it. And again, this is absolutely bare minimum. We're going to talk about next week how to take this to the next level and some agreed upon ways that we do this. So I just want you to know I'm having you practice that this week in preparation for doing more as we go on because you want to make sure you're getting good data from the user. Now, I didn't require this because in this case, it can be either on or off. It's checked or not. But what I did do is once I process the form, right? So I have to write the code that processes the form in my event listener. Then I did at least set this back to the default. Okay. So these two lines is really all I needed to do that. Right, so now I know, and let me just go over here, right? So to just to be clear about what you need to do is you need to set up, and I say at least two input values. Now for me, I ended up using two, but I could have definitely done more. But what I ended up doing is I stripped down, um, and I'm gonna show you branching in a minute by a way to talk about this, because when I was doing this before I was doing the user input, I definitely had more things on my object that I was capturing. 
um, cause it was simple, but now that we're to user input, right? I'm going to scale that back a little bit and kind of think about what is the minimum I can get to minimum data I can get from the user to process this. So in this case, I did say, you know, this, and actually I need to put this is that this a code, uh, this code is assuming a gym time of eight o'clock. And I'm going to say this code is assuming user of Rio just to set some of the assumptions out. The other thing I did is I ended up using on my object because I did use an object that I then pushed into the array as I did use new day and new date. Uh, and then I did and I'll sh I gave you a link. I haven't pushed this code yet, um, but I did use a stack overflow reference for pulling out just the date itself. Because I, if you just look at uh, the, the date uh, output, is this right? Just looking at the console to see why it, all that stuff is there. Let's just refresh it real quick. Um, if you look at uh, let date equal new date, and we'll learn about this actually, I'll talk about this. Um, then if I hit date, you'll see that this is the actual date object. And so that little snippet of code here stripped out and gave me only the actual date. And I like that. I liked doing that. I did store that full date in there. Like if I was to look at my task per day, I can see. Oh, right now there's nothing in there. Oh, yeah. That, so that's the other thing. Next week. <laughs> all right. This is not persistent data. This is the other thing I want you to know. Is this not persistent data? So whenever the page refreshes, um, you lose the data because it does not persist. And next week we're going to learn about how to make data persist by using local storage. And I'll have more to say about that at that point. But at this point, right uh, now, if I did that down, and by the way, using this console to show you these kind of uh, fields, I'm not sure why. Oh, there it is. I just didn't have it because now if I looked at that, I can see that there's my object or my array. My I have one object sitting in there, but look at that date, what is in there. Uh, and so FYI, here's the other thing I did. Uh, and somebody asked me about this. You don't have to do this. You can just create a W4T uh, folder in your public repo, but I did this. And actually I'm doing this in the following morning of week or on Wednesday. Normally I re try to release all this by Tuesday, but I wrote this um, and then I didn't like it <laughs> because I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like the, the way it was processing. And I was just trying to do it the way I had done the previous code to make it work. So I ended up doing pretty significant rewrite on my code. And so what I did to do that, I'll just show you again, not required, but somebody asked me, like, I felt like this was the perfect example of doing a branch. Let me just kind of arrow through, let me hide this real quick and make this a little bigger. Oh, we'll do it here. Um, so what I did is I, I created a branch. I think I can scroll back. Yeah, so I get branch and I created a branch called W4T-1. And that's the branch that I'm on there right now. And this has the code that I wrote. But if I went back and looked at git checkout, because that's how you then, it's like branch in this case is kind of like a folder. And I'm not going to end up merging. Merging is where you take your branch and you move, merge it in get branch check out main it switches back to main uh, and in this case this was the code I didn't like I, I didn't like my <laughs> this version it was just ugly I didn't like the way it was trying to handle oh actually that's there maybe because I had it open maybe because I have it open let me switch back to my so main is your main branch so w and again that's great about using your up arrow because if you forget <laughs> right so anyway I, that's a that's a use of branch to to do so when you um do that you're basically saying start at the starting point i was at before i did my branch and then i moved in my branch take my code into that branch and then let me modify it so actually i could now at this point now that i kind of have it because i didn't want to disrupt my original code I could now merge them back. And actually I might do that, but I just want you to know 
like that is a use like because i wrote something it was working but i didn't like the way it worked so i ended up doing a complete rewrite but i wanted to have my other code intact and that is kind of a um, a good use case for branching but generally more use cases for branching are when you're working for with teams and you're integrating new functionality into your code okay so that's this week. Now my point, uh, my process process now will be to record your attendance video for week four and just talk about um, some over overviewing concepts. So I hope this video is at least helps you understand what you need to do. This definitely, this is taking a, a major leap for us into the browser, gathering that user, getting and process, get and process user input. Because this is really what most people, when they think about JavaScript, is learning how to do this. So here we are on week four let's think about it as really double that week eight on a regular 18 week class doing it at this point but hopefully everything you've learned up at this point will serve you well if not again i recommend coming to chat with me so we can give you some uh, additional explanation if needed all right talk to you later